counseling is something generally they ask for help. Now sometimes we approach a person want to talk to someone. If he has a preconceived mind or intention not to talk about his feelings, then uh, we cannot change a person. If the person is not open, we cannot change a person, but we can guide the person to understand his feelings, guide his this person to understand his feelings, his situation. So do you want to change? For instance, someone has marriage problem. So we realize that. So we ask the person, do you want to work on it? Do you want to change? Now, if he say, no problem, no problem, I don't want to change, uh, we cannot do anything about it. Now, if the spouse is present, it's usually better than the spouse together. The spouse might say, yeah, I see some problems, but he doesn't see the problem. Then we can talk about it. But if a person doesn't want to talk about, for instance, his spiritual life, we want to help someone's spiritual life, and we ask them uh, how it is, and then he say, always fine, no problem, no problem, or I don't care about it. Uh, if the person doesn't want to change at all, we cannot, we cannot change them, but we can guide them. If you are willing to change, God can bless your life. Do you want more blessings to come to your life? Or do you want your life to continue to have uh, this problem? So we can, we can guide them to think, to face this problem. Okay. And the next question is, how can you help someone who don't listen to your advice? That's why we need counseling. Uh, we're not just teaching them. We are guiding them. To understand, uh, first to let them know I care about them, uh, I care about the feelings, and then we, uh, uh, after we have empathy and support, we want to guide him to find the problem. So what's the root problem? What, uh, what are the problems he is facing now? Do you want to change it? So we, we ask uh, these questions to guide him. Now if he doesn't want to change now, and we can, we can uh, give some reasons. Uh, we can guide them to think about some reasons. For instance, if you continue like this, do you think uh, you get more blessings from God? Do you want to be blessed by God? Do you want to, to overcome, be able to overcome your problem? Uh, do you want to have a better marriage? Uh, do you want to have more strength from God? So we can use these questions to guide them. But if the person totally is not willing, he doesn't like counseling at all, then there's nothing we can do. When it's, it's like when we do evangelism, that does, person doesn't want to listen to us, we cannot do anything. And then even a Christian, when a Christian doesn't want to change, we cannot really change the person. Uh, we can guide them to change. We can pray that God will touch his heart so that he's willing to change. Okay, and then um, if you counsel a person who start crying, should you start crying with him? Now, if you feel like crying, it's okay to cry with him, but you don't have to make yourself cry. You just feel the feeling. He's so sad, he's willing to cry in front of a stranger. I'm, I'm not a stranger, but a, uh, someone else, a counselor. So he's willing to cry in front of me, so he must feel very sad. So I try to feel the feeling and express it. Oh, you must be feeling very sad. I'm sorry that happens to you. And I uh, understand that it's very difficult for you now. So we can empathize with that person. We don't have to, we don't have to respond exactly the same way as the counselee. And then next question, can female person counsel a female, uh, a male counsel a female who divorced her husband only two pe uh, people in a room. Okay, this is not advised. Uh, if you counsel someone who has just divorced, it's better to have a to a woman counsel. If the woman doesn't know how to counsel, counsel, then ask a woman to be present to avoid the woman to depend on us. Because if there is a dependency, that what happened is it will affect. Uh, our ministry and it can uh, destroy our, our, our ministry too. So we don't want to let uh, a, a situation to give uh, ourselves and the woman a chance. 
So we have to watch this, that if it's counseling, even if the person is not divorced, uh, but it's when it's counseling someone in opposite sexes, it's better to do it in an open space. There are other pre people present uh, so that uh, we, if, to protect ourselves. And it's best to have someone sit by us. If not, then we sit in a room that there are other people present too. Okay, four, if your spouse is not ready to open up and tell you, tell me her feelings, what can I do to her? Now, generally, uh, that doesn't happen like that. It's more happened that the husband doesn't want to open up. If the wife doesn't want to open up, then generally, women want to talk about their feelings. If she doesn't want to open up, actually, a lot of times people, when they talk, they express already what is in the mind. They will say, I feel very unhappy with you. Then we can say, I'm very sorry. I, uh, I, can you tell me more about it? I, I want to know about it. I want to work on it. If I've done something wrong, please forgive me. I want to be able to do something uh, to help this relationship. So usually it's something that has stopped the relationship. That some uh, feelings that has not been handled something that happened in the past that we did not handle it. So we need to handle the problems so that we can communicate better. Usually, a uh, husband and wife relationship is because things have happened that the marriage now is not in a good condition. So we want to work on it and then also express, I'm willing to work on the relationship. Are you willing? Now, if there is a counselor, then a counselor can talk with them and ask them if they have hope in the marriage. Do they want the marriage to get better? Do they think the marriage will get better? So these are ways that we can do to guide the person to be able to be willing to face the problems in the, in the marriage and try to work on it. Okay, and then the last question. We have people who cannot express their problems to anyone. How can we help him? Uh, he can have problem expressing to anyone. Then we have to uh, give them suggestions. For instance, he said, uh, my wife yelled at me, and how do you feel? I don't know. So do you feel angry? Do you feel sad? Do you feel lonely, desperate? So we can give him choices. And do you want to improve? So we can ask them for a few uh, possibilities. Do you want to improve? Do you want to work on it? Do you believe or do you, you don't believe? So one and two and three, which one do you want? So uh, we want to give them choices then to guide them. And also when people, they lost the feelings, they don't, they don't sense the feelings anymore. Then we suggest to them uh, some things they can do. For instance, what do you like? If they like anything, if they like to eat, okay? Tell me how you feel when you eat. When you're eating, how do you feel? When you're eating something you like, how do you feel? Do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Do you feel lonely? What do you feel? So uh, help them to find out the feelings when they are doing something they like or ask them their unpleasant experiences how did you feel there and give them some choices so for people who have lost the feelings they can learn to restore the feelings by praising God more and be happy about things be happy about the food or someone who who helped them so uh, can you be help be happy about the person so uh, ask the person to do that at home all the time and say it's good to have a bed thank God for the bed so if the person think about the bed then he has has more happiness as the home he has the home that he can sleep there so he he can thank God for that I will continue now I don't see any more question right guide are you asking a question now if you break at two, is that fine? So can all the other people say, uh, respond in the Kenya leader? 
group now if we stop at two then what happened is then as two that that's that is it then you eat so um uh, please respond with the Kenya leader global okay now we continue and uh, please send me if it's okay to eat at two okay now number five guide the council leader to analyze the situation and the problem so we want to after we have empathy for the person the person feel uh, accepted and comforted now sometimes it could take a long time if the person is very very sad crying for a long time we just let him cry for a long time uh, at, at a certain point we might ask then we can ask them about uh, guiding them to analyze the situation so we we let uh, give them time to express the feeling but if it, if they if um, there's no no more time then we can uh, try to guide them to the next step now okay to guide a counselor to analyze the situation and the problem so we can ask these questions to analyze the situation and the problem so where do you think the problem come from so if someone says I you know we my husband and I fight all the time so where do the problem come from the person says come from him okay come from him not me uh, then we can ask him okay what problem of him tell me so we if he says the problem come from that person we ask find out more about how the person the, the problem come from that person but then we can after that we can still ask her do you think any of the problem come from you does it all come from him does it come from you also so we want to find out now if the person is not willing to talk about it then we just start with working uh, with the problem of the husband okay so uh, what are affecting uh, the person who hurts you uh, so this person he hurts you a lot so what's happening uh, what are something that affect him and then he become angry with you what is happening to him what is happening to you so find out what's happening and then what are affecting you so uh, how does it affect you what makes you yell at each other what makes it hard for you to relate and if it's church co-workers so what happened to him and how does it affect him and how does it affect you uh, what is what are some reasons that uh, you find it hard to work together do you think the problem just came from him and number five what are some factors that affect you both so what are something that affect both of you and what are the root problems uh, self-image relationship sensitivity past hurts despise and resolve emotions communication and realistic expectation or controlling behavior okay what are these self-image self-image means for instance this person says whatever I do I cannot do well I always fail nobody likes me and then it could be the self-image but we might we might not say well it's your own self-image we want to guide them okay uh, to find out if it's mainly his self-image then we can ask questions like um, what do you think about yourself do you like yourself do you think you can do anything well uh, can you name something that you have done well so you can we can find out and if the person says no 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 I cannot do anything well I always fail nobody likes me so they have a low self-image and they also might have failed many times already we want to find out too how why does he fail so many times it could be that he hasn't learned how to uh, relate to people how to communicate with people how to talk with people he might have problem with that so we want to find out what are things that affect him uh, that does he what does he think about himself <clears throat> okay relationship so some root problem relationship the husband and wife they just don't like each other they cannot talk they cannot relate they can they don't listen so we want to find out if that's uh, one of the uh, problems <clears throat> sensitivity what I mean is oversensitivity too sensitive 
when someone says something immediately they will say he's hurting me he is attacking me he's doing something against me so uh, so is he too sensitive is he always thinking people don't like him always have a self uh, ha, has a negative thinking about people and about himself so then he become very sensitive so we want to find out this root problem because if we know that it's a self-image problem then we can help the person with the self-image before we help the relationship or help the self-image problem before we help his spiritual life some people think God doesn't like me because nobody likes me so God will not like me too so that's a self-image problem so we want to find out if it is a self-image problem or is it true that he has committed so many sins and he doesn't repent and so he uh, uh, so he has problem with God so what are the reasons why he continued to sin without repentance what are the the reasons the cause the ba the root cause and the past hurts the past hurts is like this someone has been hurt for instance by uh, in, from childhood then uh, whenever he has any relationship with anyone uh, any friend uh, the spouse or the church members he always feel this person is hurting him because he has unresolved hurts from the past he always think that people don't like him people attack him uh, so it came from the past hurts so this past hurts has to be healed and then despise so uh, was he does he feel despised by the other people that does he despise himself does he look down upon himself does he or does uh, if a couple come come so does one person despise the other person and resolve emotions so are there anger frustration sadness always staying in the heart if that those unresolved emotions stay in the heart he cannot face any problem he cannot have the strength to face any problem if he's always sad always angry so we want to find out the reason for the anger and handle the anger first before we handle other problems now for counseling you might say I really don't have much time to do that so we have to do it selectively also we need to train people to do it we as a pastor we cannot be doing counseling every day but pastors do counseling mainly for people who want to serve God we want to counsel their life help them with their life now for marriage counseling uh, it's usually hard to find someone to do because it has to be someone who has experience and usually someone who is married so it's hard to find someone then the pastor might have to do it so the pastor only selectively do what uh, what is most critical most most important for him to do it's better to train more people to be able to counsel now if they just learn a little bit and they don't do it so well uh, they can learn from the experience we can ask for instance two students to counsel someone together one is what guy uh, leading the counseling one is uh, be there and uh, help when there is any problem and then also observe and then after the counseling then uh, with, with the pastor or the two of them can uh, reflect on what happened in uh, during the counseling okay and then communication now many people have problem communication uh, in communication they think that whenever there is anything wrong they have to get angry they have to yell at the other person they have to shout they have to point out accuse the other person point out the problem with the other person some people think that communication is always like that that is a misconception but it's true for many people many people when they see anything wrong they will say the natural response is anger to be angry that's the response but that is not necessary we can find out peacefully from the other person what happened why is it like that can we work on it is there a way out so we we can talk instead of yelling and then unrealistic expectation for instance a wife expect the husband to always understand her it's very hard for male to understand a female all the time so the the wife has to tell him more about 
her feelings. Now, for most couples, I would say the wife, please tell more to your husband about your feelings. Tell it in a way of not accusing him. Don't accuse him. Just say, I like you to respond to my feelings, to listen to my feelings, and can you tell me my feelings? Uh, and I just want you to feel the feelings. <clears throat> you don't have to teach me. And I, uh, I just uh, like to hear from you uh, that you care about me. And when the husband does it right, then the wife should say, very good, very good, this time you did it well. That is helping the spouse to communicate. Instead of saying, he never understand me, I want him to understand me, he doesn't understand, he doesn't respond to me. So a lot of times there are unrealistic expectation. Also many parents expect the children to work very hard on the studies, always doing well, that is unrealistic. And so we want to find out the, the problems and the strength and how to guide them to do better and at the same time we encourage them, you're doing very good already, you're doing very well already. And controlling behavior, is one person controlling the other person? Is the wife controlling the husband or the husband control the wife? Now, the Bible says mutual submission, submit to one another. So it's not just the wife submitting to her husband, the husband commanding the wife to submit in every area because it, it doesn't work. And in the Bible it says also submit one to another. So we all submit to each other. And then, so there's, is there controlling behavior? Has to make the other person do certain things, commands a person to do certain things. And also controlling behavior sometimes of a pastor. Now, I, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not saying pastor is always the person is wrong. You know, pastors are very good. They have, you have served God a lot. But sometimes some pastors are controlling. They just want the members to do what they want them to do. They, th they think it's good, it, it's right. But then the members has not come to that level. So if we just tell them to change, they may not change. So we want to uh, guide people. That's something very important. So I hope you learn this, listening to feelings, responding to feelings, and guide people. Ask questions to find out the problems and ask questions how to uh, we can work on a problem and how to improve. So those are things we can do uh, that is better communication. So I hope you remember this guiding someone is very helpful. Okay. Now next, guide a counselee to imagine the best scenario for the future. Now this is for, for uh, counselling. To guide a person to imagine what happens if the couple now, they, uh, they love each other, they care for each other, just like before uh, when they started dating. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that you go back to that stage? Now why is there such a step? This step is for them to, to have a picture of how beautiful it is if their relationship is restored. How the relationship was when they started dating and can they go back to the same stage? And then for someone serving God, we can ask them, imagine if, uh, if the best happened to you, what, uh, what would be the situation? How would you name it when, when your ministry really go the best? So what qualities in your life would that be? We don't just say how great the church is, that, that is not helpful. But we ask, if you have a lot of strength, if you have a lot of uh, you can work, uh, help the people. What qualities would you have? Can you have a, imagine a scenario of how you are? So the person might say, oh, I imagine that I'm, I'm filled with joy all the time. I enjoy the Lord. I have strength from the Lord. I believe in, that God is a wonderful plan and I'm filled with joy. And so I help people and then they accept it. And then uh, I'm encouraged in the ministry that I enjoy serving God. So we can uh, guide them to imagine what happened when the best happened. Now, if the person cannot imagine that, we can guide them, okay? Imagine that you are fully joyful, you are very joyful, how would that be? Uh, imagine that you are full of love for people, how would that be? 
Imagine that you can speak fluently. How would that be? So ask him to describe it. So we can ask the counselor, if everything changes for the best, can you describe the best outcome of the situation? So everything changed for the best, how would it be? Now, I, I know it's hard for you to remember, remember everything. I've sent to the leaders already uh, the PowerPoint and the PDF so you can review this because it takes time. And also you need to do the homework assignment. You, uh, your leaders will correct it and let me see. Uh, let me see what it is the, so the leaders will first see it. That's how you can learn. What I'm giving you now is high quality training. Uh, even many seminaries might not have it. So I hope you will treasure this. You need to uh, do the assignment and read the material over again and work on it so that you can learn it. Um, so it takes time to learn. If not, you will forget very soon. So I hope you remember these steps. So imagine the person affects you changes or you change how it would be like. So if he changes, how it would be like. And then if you change, how it would be like. And then number three, do you believe the best scenario can happen if he or you change? So if he changes, can you forget about the past and then the future is all getting better. Can you imagine the best happen? What would it be if the best happened to you, him and you? Can you make the best of the situation? So uh, if he changes or you change, uh, you are not affected by the person. How would it be like? And then number three, do you believe the best scenario can happen? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you think he... Uh, do you think we can strive for the goal with God's help? So if you imagine that situation is very good, can you strive for that goal and say, yes, we can work on it, we can improve, we can do better and better. And then number four, is it possible to reach the goal at least to a certain extent? So the goal is high up here, so can you go a little bit, a little bit, a little higher? Can you go a little higher? So that's how... We guide a person to imagine the situation, the best scenario, that he can work on it, and then if he works on it, it will improve. So that's the first step of the counseling. Guide the counseling to think of ways to work on the problem. Now why do we ask them to think? Because if we tell them what to do, they, uh, they might not take it seriously. But if they think, okay, how can we work on a situation? So first, how can you change? If your husband doesn't change, how can you change? How can you be joyful even when your husband is not joyful? If your husband is yelling at you, how can you uh, be joyful? So how can you work on the situation so that you are not affected by him? Uh, so ask him for possible ways to solve the problem. Okay, so now we come to the step of um, guiding the counselee to think of ways to work on the problem. So here is guide the counselee to think of ways to work on the problem. So we talk about listening to the person, responding to the feelings, and uh, guiding him to express more, and have. Uh, how to guide him to talk more about his feelings and his difficulties, his situation, and then uh, to have empathy and support, and then guide the counselee to analyze the situation and the problem, and also to imagine the best scenario for the future. So what if something changes, how would it affect, how would it affect, um, uh, can he imagine if the situation improves. Uh, if he improves, if someone else improves, how would the situation be? So uh, describe the best scenario. Uh, and then the next step is to guide the counselor to think of ways to work on the problem. So how can you work on the problem? So this is a way to ask to guide him. What can you do to receive more strength from God so that you have more peace? So, um, so guide him to receive strength from God. How, how, uh, how can you pray to have more strength from God? 
And then, what can you do to help yourself emotionally so that you are not affected strongly by that person who hurt you and by the situation? So um, that person is, you know, uh, yelling at you all the time. He hasn't changed for a long time. He has always been like that, and it's not easy for him to change. God can change him, but he doesn't allow God to change him. So, can you change? Can you think of ways that you can change so that you are not affected by him? So, what ways can you use? So we guide the person to think. Now, in uh, the teaching before, I've talked about how to do it. It's basically to say the person's words doesn't have authority, and God has a wonderful plan in my life. Nobody can stop God's plan. So even though he's yelling at me. His words just stay in the air for a split second. I don't have to take it seriously. I just say to myself, "God is helping me. God is happy that I'm handling my problems, so I have to, I I can put down the problems." So, uh, we can guide him to think, and then if he cannot think of a way, we can say, "Can I suggest some way for you to work on how to not to be affected by, by the person emotionally?" Uh, so that you're not affected strongly by the person who hurts you and by the situation. Now, if there is a difficult situation, the Bible promises that if we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. So, if we seek God's kingdom, we want more people to enter the kingdom of God, and if we want God to take control over our life. That's God's kingdom. Then all these things will be added to us. And then God prepares for those who love Him things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So, if we love God, He will prepare for us things far beyond our imagination. That He will help us, even though now some people say I have financial problem, it doesn't go away right away. But in the difficult time, God help us to trust in Him and have strength from Him. And in the due time, His financial help <coughs> would come. I have, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I have gone through <coughs> financial difficulties myself, and I trust in the Lord. And in the due time, His help comes. And in the difficult times, I learn to trust in Him. Okay, number three. Do you think the person only has bad motives? Has he done anything good to you? So, if someone is hurting you, now, but does he do anything good for you? He might be cooking for you. He might be helping you, but then he just get angry easily. So he has his strength and his shortcomings. So can you think of his strengths and his motives? He has some good motives. So can you think of those good motives? And then you will say uh, he's not all bad. He has his good points, and he's helping me and blessing me in some way. So I can appreciate that, and I can be happy with that. And then the more I appreciate him, the more he might change. So we can guide a person to think that way. And then number four, do you think there are ways to build up a better relationship with him? So what can you do? Do you think it's possible? Do you think it's possible for you to、uh, like to care about him more, to communicate with him more,、uh, to help him more? So would that help the relationship? So so these are ways that we can guide a person. Guide a person to to think of ways how to overcome the problem. The advantage to have him think of the problem is think of the solution is so that after he thinks he will remember it better. Okay, number five. If you have a better relationship with him, do you think he might change a little bit? So, if you care for him more, you are more positive toward him. You you're kinder to him. You you love him more. Do you think he would change a little bit, just a little bit? At least he won't yell at you so much. So to guide him to think, would he change a little bit? And then five, six. How can you treat him nicer and build a better relationship with him? Is it possible?、Uh, sometimes the difficulty of the、uh, of the relationship is not that it's not possible to build up the. Better relationship is that the person is not willing because、uh, the other person has mistreated him so many times, so he doesn't want to treat him nicely. But when he doesn't want to treat him nicely, then he will suffer. 
then the, he will suffer because the other person will yell at him and get angry. But if he treats him nicely and say, it doesn't matter what he has done, I'll forget about it, I have compassion on him because he has been hurt by people, so I have compassion on him and I pray for him and bless him and be nice to him. And then when he feels my care and love, and then he can change. Now there are many testimonies like that, that there are people with the family members that they are mistreating uh, this person and then but finally he was changed by God and then he treat the family member nicer and then gradually the family members change. So it's possible to change the family members if this person will change their behavior. Now sometimes it's hard to change but sometimes the family members can change. Uh, okay, is there a way, number seven, is there a way that you two can communicate peacefully about the problem? So is it possible to communicate peacefully in a peaceful way, not to yell at each other, not to compete, not to accuse, but just say, okay, how can we communicate better? How can I uh, respond to your feelings? How, how can I, uh, in what way should I talk to you? And then we can communicate in a more peaceful way. Now, generally there are always more peaceful way to communicate, but many people are not used to it because the education they have, the nonverbal education they have from the past is when the parents have any disagreement, they yell at each other. So many people pick up this method. The method is yelling at each other. When there is any problem, they yell at each other. Even when they serve God in the church, when there is any problem, they would get angry, frustrated. They might not yell, but they get angry, they frustrate, get frustrated. So if they realize that frustration is causing problem, then they'll say, can I have more peace in the Lord? I don't have to take it so seriously. I can relax in the Lord and have strength from God and then have the strength to face it. So, uh, so is there any way that the two can communicate peacefully? Now, and another teaching I have, I talk about ways of communication using more words of grace. Words of grace are words like this, oh, I'm happy to have you, you have done many good things to me, uh, you have helped me greatly, I appreciate your help, I like your help. Uh, so all this we can say, these are words of grace. And then even when we say words of the law, we can guide people to think. So uh, I, I realize we have some problem, but can we communicate in a way, a way that we is more peaceful, that we can help each other, that we are more, we are kinder to each other, is it, is there a way? So we can communicate, guide, ask questions so that we come up with a better solution. Now sometimes the other person doesn't want to change. We just try our best, but we just try our best and if the other person doesn't want to change, then we just let go and just be nice to him and pray for him that hopefully he will change. Number eight, when he has something good to you, when he does something good to you, what can you do to encourage him? Now, even when he cooks a meal, you can say, "Thank you very much for cooking the meal." Now, some people say, "I haven't, I cannot do it because for my whole lifetime I never did it," and that's why there are problems. Many people refuse to say thank you, and then many people refuse to say it in a stronger way and say. It's so nice that you cook for me. I'm, I, I thank you very much that you cook for me. I appreciate your heart for me. So these are ways to express the appreciation for his heart, for what he does, not just thank you. So that's something we can overcome. And this is something I do all the time. I, I, uh, when I see someone does something good, I will say, I, I like your attitude, I, you're doing well. Thank God for, for that and I appreciate your growth. So that's something we can do. Okay, number nine, what can you do when he treats you badly? So if he treats you badly, what can you do? Some people say, I'll yell back at, yell back at him, but it doesn't help. So can we just say, um, thank you for your suggestion. I'll watch it, I'll take care of it. I'll uh, try to overcome it. Can we do something like this? Can we say something like this? So, so it's, um, so uh, can we turn off what he says if he says something unpleasant and can we 
think of the good things of God. God is treating me nicely. God is blessing me. If I don't take His word seriously, God is very happy with me. So can we do that? And then number 10, do you want me to give you some suggestion of how to handle the problem? So if the person cannot think of ways, then we can say, do you want me to give you some suggestions that might help? So these are ways we guide. And this, there is no definite answer, but we guide the person to think. And then if he cannot think of any way, we can guide him. But don't ask him to do all steps together, but one step at a time, just to be nice to the other person pray for him and appreciate him so try this and let's see if it works or not okay and then help the counselee to start to change so check with the counselee whether there are internal and external resistance to handling the problem so we ask him uh, so we have come up with some solutions can you start to use it uh, are there reasons that you cannot uh, do it there are external and internal resistance. External resistance means he might stop you doing it. Uh, some of the people might stop, might stop you doing it. And then internal resistance, which is much larger, is you don't like it. You don't want to do it. You refuse to do it. You think it's unfair because the other person treats you so badly. It's hard for you to, to be nice to him. So are there resistance? So does he want to do it? So does this person want to do it? Can he treat the other person nicer? Can he start to do that nicer? Just a little bit nicer. Can he empathize the other person? So think of the suffering of the other person and then have compassion in him and empathize with him and say, I know you have had difficult times. I know sometimes uh, I made you feel unhappy. I'm sorry about that. I want to... Uh, overcome that I want to have a better relationship with you so can he start to empathize with the other person and can he forgive can he start to forgive can he manage his emotions so he might we might need to help the person to go through this many times so if he's yelling at you right now so what can you do and this takes time to to learn if the person is yelling at you, you can use an object like this. This is him. He's yelling at you now. So what can you do? You can say in the heart, God is loving me. What he says doesn't affect me. If I don't take it seriously, I can let go. I can, even though he's yelling at me, I can say God is loving me and I can uh, stop him from affecting me greatly. And I, I can say, uh, speak gently to him so to uh, soften his heart and then uh, can we manage the emotions at that time so how can we do it we pray to the Lord Lord I trust in you please give me peace and you help me so I can be peaceful even if we are a little more peaceful we can say to ourselves I have improved thank God I've improved I can appreciate myself I can applaud myself and then I can Rejoice in that, then we have more joy. And then, how will the other person respond when you change? If you are nicer to him, how would he respond? Would he beat you up? Maybe not. Would he yell at you? Maybe. Maybe not. Would he smile at you? Maybe not. But at least he thinks it's you are nicer. So he might change a little bit. So these are ways we guide the person to think. It's not so hard. Impossible. It's not so impossible to change uh, in the way we treat him. And then two, guide a person to have the motivation to change. So how can we have the motivation to change? The reason is God loves you, you're precious, and if you handle this family problem or handle this ministry problem, your life will go higher and higher and higher. And you overcome your internal emotions, then you're more joyful and peaceful and you enjoy life more. And you're not affected by people gradually you can be free from all negative influences and then gradually you're more and more peaceful and joyful so we can uh, guide him to understand so uh, what are some reasons that uh, you uh, that you improve it would benefit you what how would it benefit you so he asked him questions number three guide him how to 
adjust his thinking and emotions, how to calm himself down in order to change his attitude and action. So how to adjust his thinking? He has to adjust his thinking to realize the other person gets angry easily, so I accept that. To adjust the thinking that he has been hurt by many people, so he will hurt people easily, so I don't take his words seriously. To start to realize that his words are not, they don't stay forever. They just stay for one split second. So change the thinking. And God is loving me right now, even when I'm uh, being yelled at. God is loving me now. I can have peace right now. And I can uh, relax in Him now. So how can we calm down? Sometimes we take a deep breath. Or we can say, uh, I'll come back to you in a moment. I, I, I'll relax. I'll pray about this in a, for, for a few minutes. And I'll come back to you. Or tomorrow I'll come back to you. Guide him, number four, guide him how to change his behavior. So how, so how to change the behavior to relate to him, to talk to him, how to change. Give him assignments of what to do in order to handle the problem. So can you start to do this? Can you start to change in this way? Can you start to uh, be, uh, uh, do this next week? Be nicer to him. Pray for him. Can you pray for him? And uh, pray how many times a day for him? And then number six, give him encouragement. For instance, you can do it. I applaud your effort. I see that you have these strengths. I believe you can. You will succeed. You will enter God's perfect plan. So we encourage him. You have the motivation. Thank God for that. You can do it. You can start to do it. You have the strength to do it. And you have the strength from God. And God is happy with you. And you can be happy with yourself too. You will improve more and more. And then set a time to follow up. Uh, so if we decide we want to follow up on this person, we want to set a time to follow up. So these are helping the counselee to start to change. And then follow up. First check with him how the conditions are after the last session. So in the next session, we ask him how it has been. And then two, find out what he has done to adjust his emotions and actions. So what has he done and has he improved? If he has improved, we'll applaud him. You're doing well, you're doing well. Thank God for that. And find out if there is any improvement. If there is any, find out what problems are still there. Find out the reasons for improvement or the lack of improvement. Applaud him of any improvement. Uh, what do we do if he has not done anything? So, so we applaud him if we find out, oh, he has tried, he has said something nice to him at least twice in a week. Uh, he has done something good to him twice. He has appreciated him twice. Then we say, you're doing well, you're doing well. So a little change, it's the good news. From that little change, more change will come. So we have, we'll, we'll applaud him. And then if he hasn't changed, we'll find out why and, and how can, he can start. Now, what stops you from changing? So what are things that stop you? And how can we find a solution, find solutions to, that you can start, change, start to change? Adjust assignment according to his condition and motivation. So adjust assignment. So if it's very hard for him to change, maybe assignment is just to pray now. And then whenever he's yelling at you, just pray, just pray. When he prays, then he'll be more peaceful. Maybe an assignment is just more peaceful and uh, not back at him, even when the other person is yelling, not back, okay? Thank you. Just do the minimum. See if he can do it. And then if someone has improved a lot, then he can do better. Then he can, uh, that assignment can go to the next step. 